Program Director and Acting Spokesperson of the Department, the Director General of the Department of Home Affairs, Mr. Tommy Makoji, the Border Management Authority Commissioner, Dr. Mike Masiapato, and your Deputy Major General Chilembe, as well as the Acting Deputy Director General for Immigration, Mr. Mojiri Matthews, members of the media. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and thank you for this prompt response to our press conference. I called you here today to deal with several matters which affect the Department of Home Affairs and have been in the media in recent days. Let me start with the secular that was issued by the Department of Home Affairs on the 21st of December, 2024. This circular, and I must correct, not directive as it was colloquially called, this circular was directed to the Commissioner of BMA as well as managers of ports of entry. It was also sent to Provincial Inspectorate and Visa Facilitation Centers. This circular was meant to guide BMA officials at the ports of entry on what they do when they encounter nationals of other countries falling within a particular category at the borders. These will be individuals who have applied for visa extensions, for waivers, or even for appeals and have not yet received outcomes negative or positive, meaning they have not yet received an outcome whether their application has been successful or not. I wish to emphasize that this circular was an internal communication document. It was targeted for Home Affairs and BMA officials who I've mentioned. But rather than guide anybody, unfortunately, this document raised a lot of storm in the media and within the establishments that have to do with tourism. The Department of Home Affairs was accused of chasing away tourists out of the country and in the process weakening and even risking the collapse of the tourism industry. One specific group of tourists mentioned in this regard are called swallows in inverted commas. These are these are people who move between northern and southern hemisphere in search of sunny days, and they are regarded as very important to the tourism industry. I wish to state categorically that the Department of Home Affairs will gain nothing by destroying the tourism industry, which is regarded as one of the pillars of the economy, not only in South Africa, but in many other countries, the Ministry of Home Affairs and the Ministry of Tourism always work in partnership on issues of tourism because both departments are important in this regard. This particular issue was no exception. And it's for these reasons that with these accusations intensifying, I conducted our tourism minister, Ms. Patricia Delil, and we discussed the matter. After this consultation, I did try to clarify this matter in the debate of, of State of the Nation Address on the 14th of February, 2024. In my input, I did concede that this was a very unfortunate secular, which should not have been issued because Matters it was trying to clarify could have easily been addressed in the normal course of, operational, of operations between the Border Management Authority and the department. 
I further clarify this matter on the occasion of the responses to oral questions by the Justice Crime and Prevention Cluster, JCPS Cluster, during plenary in Parliament on the 28th of February 2024. Judging by the reactions, it appears that my explanation in Parliament was not deemed to be enough. We arrived at the conclusion that if indeed the secular had the effect of chasing tourists out of the country, we need to find a way uh, to resolve that. Hence, we needed to check at the borders. If there was a significant spike of people who had visited South Africa as tourists and are leaving, if there was such a spike, we wanted to act in mitigation. In this regard, we reason that if tourists are in trouble, their first port of call will be the tourism industry operators, as well as the Ministry of Tourism. If the industry feels threatened, they will approach the tourism ministry. It is with that in mind that we approach Minister Delil once more to find out how many people approached her as a consequence of actions emanating from this secular. Minister Delil informed us that only one case was referred to her department, and she immediately contacted the Department of Home Affairs, and the matter was resolved to the satisfaction of the individual consent. We also scouted our ports of entry, especially the airports, to see if such individuals were encountered. It was the Cape Town International Airport where five people are said to have encountered problems because they were declared undesirable due to their overstay in the country. We have instructed officials to take steps so that this undesirable status could be lifted without any waste of time. Ladies and gentlemen, I think it is important for me to outline this whole concept of declaring people undesirable. The word undesirable is perhaps by itself very unfortunate because it sounds scary, but it is the term used. It was the term used when the Immigration Act of 2002 was enacted in Parliament, and it appears in the Immigration Act number 13 of 2002. In all the ports of entry, in and out of South Africa, we have got an electronic movement control system, which is called MCS. When people enter the country, the MCS electronically records the date and time of entry. As you would know, your passports and visas indicate the number of days you have been allocated to be in South Africa. If you exit your allocated days, even by just one day, the MCS, being an automated system at the borders, will pick it up, regard it as an overstay, as I said, regardless of the number of days, and automatically declare you undesirable. Fortunately, lawmakers in this country also realized that there could be a myriad of reasons that may cause a person to exceed the allocated days. Hence, in the Act, the legislature empowers the minister to review and set aside an undesirable status on application by the affected individual if cogent reasons are provided. I need to explain something also important again. When you apply for the extension of your visa before it expires, you are given a receipt which has a reference number with which you can trace your application. In case your visa expires before the department has responded to your application, that receipt will act as an extension 
off your visa until such time that you get the response, positive or negative, from the department. I have tried my best to explain this matter on two occasions in Parliament, that people who are carrying receipts for having applied for a visa, before they get any response, that receipt act as an extension. Until such time that there's a response. And this means that no law enforcement officer, immigration officer, or officials at the port of entry may trouble you while you are carrying this type of a receipt. As I said earlier on, when the circular was issued, it was an attempt to guide the BMA officials because they were regarded as new at the borders. Otherwise, this is in the law has been happening for a long time, that if you have applied for your extension and you, you didn't get an answer, your receipt is regarded as an extension temporarily until an answer is provided, because the answer may be no, but it may as well be yes. So there was really no need to, to write a circular about it because it has been there. That's what I was trying to explain. Now, if there's anybody who was, de who was declared undesirable while they were carrying the receipt, they need to present themselves to the department so that their undesirable status can be removed. Given that we have identified only one person from the Department of Tourism and five at the Cape Town International Airport, we are not in a position to conclude that these were the only people who were negatively affected by the circular. So today, we are making a call to people in the industry or any other institution, of course, that will include the media, which are in a position to identify such people so that we can immediately resolve the issues. Up to so far, the accusations directed at the Department of Home Affairs are full of generalities, anecdotes, and no specific cases were given to us. We are pleading today, we are pleading today, that anybody who wants to accuse uh, Home Affairs must please be specific and say you did this to this, this and this to so and so, and these are the results. Be specific because accusations without providing specific details won't help the individuals that are affected. You'll complain and accuse, but the individuals won't be helped. Except, of course, if the intention was never to help such individuals, but just to throw mud at the department. In that case, it will be clear what your intention is. But if the intention is to help and save the, the industry, we expect people to try and be specific, not just generalize, because it won't help. Ladies and gentlemen, let me go to the second issue that brought us here to talk to you in this press conference. One of the media houses published an article on Sunday, the 10th of March, 2024, about a certain Mr. Kuda from Zimbabwe. It is, he is said to be fighting tooth and nail to stop the Department of Home Affairs from deporting him back to Zimbabwe after allegations that he fraudulently obtained his permanent residence permit in South Africa. In the story, Mr. Mbofi is waxing lyrical about how the department never responded to his court papers and court orders. In a way, Mr. Mbofi was trying to demonstrate that the department was guilty and is innocent. But interestingly, in the newspaper article, Mr. Mbofi is avoiding to deal with the question of whether there is any truth in the accusation that his papers are fraudulent or, or not. He's concentrating on court processes and their technicalities and the failures of department in dealing with the courts. Nowhere does Mr. Mbofu mention that the department, as the custodian of all immigration documents, informed him 
and his lawyers as far back as the 23rd of June 2023 that his purported permanent resident permit is actually fraudulent. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here today to confirm that according to our records, Mr. Kudogwashi Mbofu's permanent residence permit is fraudulent, was not issued by the Department of Home Affairs, and we do not know where he obtained it from. We can confirm that the permanent residence permit reference number appearing on Mr. Mbofu's document does not exist in our systems, and we can further confirm that the control number appearing on Mr. Mbofu's purported document was not issued by the department to him, but rather it was legitimately issued to somebody else. As to how Mr. Mbofu came across that control number, we do not know. It's a matter that will be investigated, as we'll say later. I think I need to repeat this so that there's no confusion. There are two numbers here that are being mentioned, and we are confirming that the permanent residence permit reference number, there is a reference number there, which appears on Mr. Mbofu's document, does not exist within the Home Affairs system. Now, the second thing we are also confirming that a control number, a control number that is appeared on Mr. Mbofu's document does exist but it was legitimately awarded to somebody else and not to Mr. Mbofu. And as to how he came across that there is such a number, we do not know, we could not yet establish that. But we want to emphasize that it's not possible in our system for the same control number to be used more than once. As control numbers are face value documents, printed by the gov uh, government printing works, GPW. Face value documents are printed on a particular specific type of paper, and they've got control numbers, and the control number may not be used twice. It's a matter of national embarrassment that Mr. Mbouf was able to obtain employment as a chief financial officer, or CFO, at the Northwest Department of Economic Development, Department of, of Economic Development, handling public funds. After ascertaining these facts about Mr. Mbov, I immediately phoned the acting premier of Northwest, Mr. Nuno Maloy. And to the credit of the Northwest government, he told me that Mr. Mbofu has already been suspended by the government of the West on learning about these facts. However, listen, and gentlemen, there are several issues that did not sit well with me as the minister. Number one, why did Home Affairs officials who picked up this matter not open a police case immediately as soon as they come across uh, this fraud? and also make an attempt to get this fraudulent document from Mr. Mbouf, because it's supposed to be in our name. Two, why did Home Affairs officials not respond to court papers to an extent that Mr. Mbouf is proudly mentioning the non-responsiveness of the department and also including the non-responsiveness of the minister? Three, how did Northwest Development Corporations Human Resource Unit employ Mr. Mbofu without performing due diligence because it is the duty of each prospective employer to perform such before they employ anybody. Before they hire anybody, employers are known and people who are specialists in HR, they know this fact, not only for government, but for all employers, public and private. Now, it is for these reasons that we have handed over this matter to the SIU, not only to probe Mr. Mbofu, but also officials in government, both in Home Affairs 
and the Northwest Development Corporation, who dealt with this matter of Mr. Mbofu. Now, I wish to remind the country how, after Bushiri, the so-called prophet, Pastor Bushiri, obtained this fraudulent permanent resident permit, which he used to defraud his own congregation of 102 million rand. 14 Home Affairs officials in permitting where these visas are produced wrote a petition to me as the minister demanding that counter-corruption unit in the department must stop investigating what they call their errors. This alarming petition led to the establishment of now the well-known ministerial task team headed by a former director general in the presidency, Dr. Cassius Lubisi. It was disturbing for me, ladies and gentlemen, for people working for the state to open this mention in a petition that we are committing errors and nobody should investigate them. That's how the Lubisi report was appointed. Now the question is, is Mr. Mpofu's case one of these so-called errors that were not supposed to have been investigated? Now, we believe the SIU will provide answers. For now, as Department of Home Affairs, we have opened a criminal case at the Pretoria Central Police Station, and we are also happy that the Northwest Department uh, uh, Development Corporation has also suspended Mr. Mbofu. We will see what the SIU bring. Now, I want to deal with the presidential proclamation handed over to SIU some, some days back. <clears throat> because now, Mr. Mbofu's issues lead me to this third issue which I want to discuss with you today. As a result of the re revelations of the Lewis report, Home Affairs asked the president to issue a proclamation for the SIU to investigate visa issues in the Department of Home Affairs. We are happy that the president has issued such a proclamation and the SIU is going to work hand in glove with the Dr. Lubisi team and the multidisciplinary task team, which was appointed as a result of the recommendation from the original Lubisi report. I also wish to remind the country what I once said in one press conference, unfortunately I can't remember the date, when some people accused us of doing nothing to secure our borders. This was before the advent of the Border Management Authority and its border guards. The accusations were made when social media videos showed poor people jumping the border, some of them in order to come into South Africa, buy a loaf of bread or mealy meal or paraffin. Now, at that time when this accusation was made that we are doing nothing, I pointed to the country that People want us to chase lizards while crocodiles abound. I described crocodiles as respectable people who enter the country legally wearing suits or high heels and carrying briefcases full of cash to bribe officials to legalize their stay in the country. I said then that we are going to concentrate our energies and resources <clears throat> on the crocodiles. I never said we are going to leave the lizards alone. I said we are going to concentrate on the crocodiles because the country seems to believe that our problems lies those on those border jumpers. I wish to enthusiastically tell you today that with the work of Lubisi team and multidisciplinary team, and the SIU, the days of the crocodiles, like Mr. Mbufu, 
are numbered. From the LVC team, we have got reason to believe that these crocodiles are found all over the country in very high positions. And I want to report today that their days are numbered because we're not going to take this issue lying down and the SIU is going to be very active. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. I thought journalists are allowed to applaud after some <laughs> <laughs> presentation. <laughs>